got another exam question walkthrough for A-level chemistry. So this is number 15 in the electrode potentials playlist. So the question deals with the drawing of a cell diagram, writing cell reactions and calculating the cell potential, explaining reactions using electrode potentials, and there's a little question about fuel cells. Questions suitable for all of the major exam boards. I hope you like the video and if you do, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe to the channel and you'll find out every time I post a new video. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the first thing you've got to do is draw the um, setup for the electrochemical cell based on systems one and four. So I've gone for system four on this side. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. So in the beaker, you need MnO4 minus ions in solution, H plus ions and Mn2 plus ions. Don't forget about those H plus ions. That would be a common mistake there. Dipping into that, you need a solid platinum electrode and then you've got the wire going round through the voltmeter to the other half cell so that's going to be your solid chromium uh, dipping into a CR3 plus aqueous solution and uh, you need a salt bridge connecting the two solutions and just make sure that your salt bridge goes into the solutions and I've just put there I don't think they, they want this but um, all solutions would need to be at one mole per decimeter cubed. Moving on to the second part, we've got to construct the equation for the overall cell reaction. So you can see that system 4 has the more positive electrode potential. So its half equation is going to run in the forwards direction, which means that the other one is going to run in the reverse direction. So when we add the two um, half equations together, the electrons need to cancel out. So we're going to need to multiply system 1 by 5 to get the electrons up to 15 and system 4 we're going to multiply by 3. So there's the overall equation there. Moving on to part B, you've got to explain why this conversion of MnO4 to minus to MnO2 and MnO4 minus is disproportionation. Well that's because the manganese is oxidized and reduced in that reaction and the oxidation process is going from that MnO4 to minus to MnO4 minus. That's because the oxidation number of uh, manganese goes from plus 6 to plus 7. So it's gone up, so that's oxidation. Reduction is the MnO4 2 minus going to MnO2. And that's because we're going from plus 6 oxidation state to plus 4. And then for the next part, we've got to use the information in the table to explain why that happens. Why does MnO4 2 minus uh, disproportionate in acid conditions. So I've already started the two um, half equations we're going to be interested in. They both contain that MnO4 to minus ion. So similar to before, the more positive electrode potential is going to run in the forwards direction. But to get the idea of equilibrium into the answer, we're just going to go, this one is going to shift to the right. And therefore, the less positive electrode potential system will shift to the left. So there's that written up and then all we're going to do now is write up the equation. So if we have a look at the electrons, we've got uh, just the one in system three, we've got two in system five. So we're going to need to double system three when we add it to system five. And moving on to part C about the fuel cell. So this is about the alkaline hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. We've got the overall equation for the cell reaction. And we're told that system 2 is the positive electrode of the cell. So the fact that it's the positive electrode means that its half equation is going to be running in the forwards direction. So if we have a look at what we need to create and compare it to what we've already got, we need two moles of hydrogen. Well, we haven't got them in the half equation, so they're obviously going to be involved in the other half equation. So uh, two moles of H2. We've got the mole of oxygen. We need to make two moles of H2O. 
So you can see that in this half equation here, we've got two moles of H2O on the left-hand side. So to end up with two on the right, we're going to need four moles of H2O um, as a product in that half equation. So when you add this to this, this 4H2O will cancel down to two because of those two there. The other things we need is, well, we don't want these four electrons to appear in the final equation, not there, are they? So we need to put four electrons on that side of the half equation. Likewise, we don't want these four hydroxide ions to appear in the final equation. So we're gonna bring them in on this side of the, uh, this half equation. And then because everything was divisible by two, I've simplified the equation to that although it does say in the mark scheme that multiples are allowed. Moving on to the next part, where we've got to calculate the electrode potential of the negative electrode. You can see I've written up there that the, the cell potential is 1.23 volts. Uh, you calculate that by taking the most positive electrode potential and subtracting from that the least positive. Well, we've already been told that system two is the positive electrode, so that's the most positive one. So my equation becomes that, 1.23 equals 0.4 minus x. So I'm just saying x is the um, electrode potential for the negative electrode. So solving for x gives um, a value for the electrode potential at minus 0.83 volts. And finally, one important feature of a fuel cell that's different from a conventional storage cell. Just think of a conventional storage cell as a typical battery where the chemicals are stored inside the cell. So obviously a fuel cell is different because the chemicals aren't stored in there, they are supplied to the fuel cell. So we're just going to say fuel cell needs a constant supply of fuel and oxygen or because this is talking about a hydrogen fuel cell, you could specify hydrogen and oxygen there.